Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner. And with me today are my co-host, Mushu. I said it really fast. I saw oh, you. Dang. He was gearing I up. I my mic and I was getting all ready, too. He was all... <laughs> I saw you moving really quickly. <laughs> I was like, better say it. And the other one, Anthony. And Good evening. <laughs> Uh, he's the he's the normal one. Yeah. So I'm the fast one. He's the slow one. He's, <laughs> oh, shots fired. Okay. No. no okay. He says <laughs> okay. okay. No rebuttal. Whatever. All right. Fine. Whatever. I don't care. So here we are. We're recording, and and, and folks, this this episode obviously by the title, you know, it's going to be about chupacabra. But before we get started, let's run down the preliminaries real quick to get in touch with me. I'm going to say this again. Let me know that you're a listener of the show. You don't have to say I'm a big fan or whatever. Just say I listen to your show and, and I'll approve your friend request. Same thing, Josh Turner on Instagram, Josh Turner 940 on Instagram. Tony, what's your coordinates? Uh, you can find me at, on Instagram at uh, Mushu, uh, PRT Mushu, and you can also find me at the same on Facebook, PRT Mushu. Uh, my uh, email is PRT Mushu as well, so you can email me there. PRT Mushu at what? At gmail.com. Okay. Yeah, you're the fast one, right? <laughs> okay. I'm so fast. I'm ahead of myself. Uh, sure. <laughs> that blazing speed That's tripped, we tripped so him well up. Together it because, tripped him up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm already on the next thing. I didn't even Tripping go over his own Gmail. feet. <laughs> Tony's living in next week, okay? What are you doing? I've been living in 2077. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, so, that being said, we also, we you want to get in touch with me to send me your stories. You, you guys... Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. So send them to Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. Sorry, there you I go. For, forgot to say the rest of it. I'm so fast. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, you want to describe the Patreon to them, Anthony? Yeah, so the Patreon is patreon.com slash PRT podcast. And of course, if you need a link to click on, you can just expand the description of the videos and uh, you'll find... You'll find all the links to everything we're describing uh, right here. The, it's right there in one place, nice and easy for you. We have five tiers. We have a $10 through a $50 monthly tier. And the the, the higher the tier you subscribe to, the, the more of a swag bag you get. And, of course, you, you get your name on a title card on the uh, on all of our videos. Just, just have your name up there on the silver screen. To show that you're better than everyone else because you give us your money. <laughs> yes, I'm a producer. I help yes. produce Paranormal Roundtable. Mm. The, the waiter's like, sir, do you want to order? Oh, oh yes, of course. I will take the Burrito Supreme and the Taco Deluxe. Three Pack. Um, thank you, Chip Chop Chip. And I'll take a Sierra Mist. Oh, we don't have that anymore. This is Taco Bell. Oh, okay. You dare speak in this way to a paratrooper? I thought... I was somewhere else, like Chick-fil-A. Anyways, folks, I don't care where you eat, and I don't care what you say, just as long as you say good things. That's all that matters. Uh, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you go and you do the $40 tier, you get one of my books autographed along with someone else's book, like Barton Nunley or Nick Redfern, Ken Garrard, Lyle Blackburn, David Weatherly. If you get the $50 tier, you get both of my books. And and we are working to try to get as many people's stuff done as possible. We had to re-up after the conference because we sold a bunch of merchandise. And we are putting together more merchandise for the store because I'm getting all kinds of people. I want a zip-up hoodie. I want a zip-up hoodie. We are doing that. We are working on that. That is being done. Okay. We're doing everything we can. We have a lot going on, folks, and we are trying to get the mail off done. We have committed ourselves this week. If you haven't already uh, heard, we are, we are by the time this hits, we probably already will be have mailed off everything. So, anyways, folks, if you're a Patreon, you'll be getting your stuff. Thank you for uh, listening to us. And and so, what we're going to talk about today is is chupacabra. Uh, and, and you know, we're not talking about the blue dog. Now, do y'all know what the blue dog is, right? It's a blue dog. A Clifford, okay, the red dog. Here, man, come on. <laughs> no, it's not a blue dog. It's what they call a chupacabra. A lot of people were calling it that, and there were ranchers they in were Texas. Were they mistaken about it? Or were... Well, I'm going to get into that. It, it, you know, our, our friend and our dear friend and colleague, Ken Gerhardt, and I actually just was talking to him earlier. Uh, you know, I consulted with him and Nick pretty heavily on the, the last chupacabra episode, and it's been a while, but we've had so many reports now. We were talking about this on the way back from San Antonio, and Anthony's like, maybe we should do an episode on Chupacabra. And I'm like, shut up. That'll never work. 
what do we do? What do we do? No, I'm kidding. Now, I took what he said into account. And I said, you're right. We have a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to the Chupacabra. So here we are talking about it. But Ken, you know, he kind of burst my bubble because I had seen two of these blue dogs with my wife. And I had seen one years ago working at a construction site. And he goes, yeah, people see them all the time. But they're these weird looking coyotes and they have these front fangs. And some people, some people swear up and down that they've killed them drinking the blood of their chickens, uh, drinking the blood of pets. Am I right? I mean, that's. Yeah. Well, I mean, is it possible that they were just biting them? I mean. No, I mean, they were finding their animals. They're they're exsanguinated when they find them. They're drained Mm -hmm. of their blood. Drained of their blood. Ken covered a case on a show. I can't remember the name of the show, but there was a rancher down in South Texas. It was a female. Um, and she uh, was like, these things are killing my animals. Yeah, like chupacabras are really interesting to me. I don't really know that much about them because I thought they were just blue dogs. That's why, like every time I see an image of it, it just I was just like, oh, that's just a weird kind of looking like a mange dog or whatever. Mm-hmm. But why is it drinking blood? Yeah, that's... Now, that's, here, here's the thing. There's two different things going on there. Me and Nelly got all excited and I had Nick and, and Ken on the phone. I had David and I'm like, guys, guys, I just saw... And they were all like crickets, you know? And then Nick goes... Oh, 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 Josh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that are. Ken's like, yeah, yeah, we've all. It's, I've seen them. I've seen them in Abilene. David's like, yeah, yeah, me too. Everything. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, ready for this big reveal, guys? I just saw my second cryptid, you know. <laughs> and they were just kind of like, yeah, 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 whatever, dude. Uh, and David's like, well, you know, I gotta go. I gotta go back to. I gotta you know, go do some real stuff. Waxing my toes, like, you know, whatever. I don't have time for this, you know, whatever. And so I had this big old, you know, reveal, you know, I was going to, and so I go back inside and Nellie's like, well, did you tell everybody? I'm like, yeah, they weren't impressed. And she was like, why? I said, well, I guess they're pretty common now. So then when I was at the gym with Anthony and this guy was telling us about his sighting of one, I mean, it's like right there off of uh, Lamar, like, but further down from where I saw mine, it's probably the same thing. And it was when we were working out at 24-Hour Fitness, remember? Yeah. And, and so I was just like, that that, that guy uh, told us that story, and I was just like, man, everybody's seen these things, okay? So that's not what we're talking about. What we are talking about is the actual creature that's known as a chupacabra, and not the catch-all term that a lot of people, especially in the Latino community, they like to say, uh, I've seen a chupacabra. Like, people will give us a story, and you guys know this, and, and it'll totally be a dogman or a Bigfoot, and they'll say... El Chupacabra, and we're like, you just described a Sasquatch. Well, like, how is that? Yeah, it's the Chupacabra not, is like um, the only frame of reference they have. So yeah, they like, oh, a shadow attacked me and started sucking uh, my blood. And it's like, oh, that must have been a Chupacabra, right? Chupacabra like, shadow. No, Fantasma. Uh, Fantasma. <laughs> it's like, it was oh, a ghost. It was a, chuc- it was chupacabra. a Chupacabra's ghost. Yeah. Uh, so everybody's now, it's like everybody outside, you, you have the Chupacabra running around outside everybody's house. Inside has a Kukoi. I don't know what the difference is. It's a monster. But uh, when, when you think of the chupacabra what what i think of is the is the green dude right the, the, i've never seen one but i've heard all these accounts but i think of a green brown or black creature that has sometimes it has spines on its back and i think that they're always there but sometimes they're raised up and then you think of the bulbous head with what the red eyes or yellow eyes yeah and then but we get some weird descriptions so we're going to get into it when me and Anthony were, were talking on the live stream the other night, and shame on you if you don't listen to the live stream, every Friday and Sunday we do a live stream. Friday we have a guest. We just had Hellbin Holler on, Joe and Jesse Doyle, and they're great people. We had a great, a great time. That was a really good time. They talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of weird stuff they're doing out there. They're doing real boots on the ground work. And when I think of boots on the ground, that's who I think of is Hellbin Holler. Go check them out. But, uh, th- you know, it, we're talking about this on, on the live stream. Um, and, and what, what I wanted to, 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 to talk about is this creature that people see, um, out in LaGrange, we were talking about Beefhead Ditch and because we, we interview, we not interview, but we discussed with the owner of JD's Grill there in LaGrange and we were with our friend Nick from Alpha One and we talked about it in the live stream he introduced me to some people and then I met some other people and we just, and one thing led to another and I ended up talking to some, to some people about the Chupacabra. And one of the things I got was a story uh, out of, uh, but they, these people, they don't live in LaGrange, but it happened outside of LaGrange. So whenever you talk about something on the show, that's another thing. Somebody always comes up with the story and they'll be like, Hey, I got a story. And they'll tell you, I got a story from that area. Uh, you know, and it is about, said creatures that you were talking about or ghost stories or whatever. 
and, and this one happened to be Chupacabra. One of the things that they said was that people would see these things like in a ditch. Like there was this ditch where people would see this creature. So what what what, th- what these people told me, they said, look, you know, uh, we were coming back from, from uh, the east uh, and we were going down the highway going into LaGrange, which I believe was 71, right, Anthony? Yeah. And, and so they were where, where they said this was at. And they saw this thing right outside the power plant area. And they were driving, and they and they said that we were we were getting ready to exit, get onto the to go into the town of Lagrange, and he goes, it was uh, in the morning, it was still dark, but it was just just about to hit daybreak, and it was October thirtieth, which was like right before Halloween, uh, which I thought was interesting too, which would have been you know the morning of October thirtieth, right? Okay, so w- when they were they were driving in, this guy Trey, we'll call him that. He he looks over with his teenage son, and he he's, his son's like, "Dad, look at that!" And they see this thing, the way he described it, like it was hopping. He said it was hopping around, and it was going up on the kind of not onto the road, but up out of a ditch, and then back out onto the. And so I'm going to be heading out there to go and check this spot out when I go back out there. Uh, as of the time of this, when this airs, I probably will have already been there and looked at it, and and we're going to go probably Monday, right, Anthony? Yeah. And so this this uh, thing was moving uh, like off off the side of the road on the shoulder, and then coming on, but but not touching the pavement, but then going back down. And the way that they described it was, it was hopping, but when it would when it when its body would go back down. It was like, and, and the way he described it to me, he said, Roger the alien from American Dad. And he said, if you took that guy and made him more greenish black, and he said, if you made big old fangs and you gave it yellow eyes, he said the eyes were were independently glowing yellow. His son said, though, that when he kept staring at it in the rearview mirror, the eyes were turning orange, which made me think, what if this thing's eyes change color? And I'll get to that in a minute. But they said that it was hopping and then it took off, you know, into the brush. And uh, he said, dude, it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He goes, and, but that makes sense, you know, because I told him, I said, I was getting reports of this chupacabra creature uh, actually coming out of this ditch that people claim that there was this little creature that lived there. Um, Different size reports too. Some people saying that it's the size of a medium dog. Some people say it's as big as a cow. Weird, weird stuff. And so when when I when I asked this guy, I said, to, you know, Ty, Tyler, I mean, uh, Trey, I said, did you feel like it was there was something evil emanating from it? Because I've gotten that before. There was somebody that used to work for us that saw one near Comanche Trail. And if you don't know where that's at, look it up. It's outside of Austin, and they claimed that it was they felt an evil coming out. Oh, it's Phil, remember Philip? Yeah. And uh, he said it was like something evil, you know. And he showed me a picture of it in a book of what he, not a book, uh, on a uh, sketch pad or whatever that he had made, he had drawn a sketch of it. And he said, this is what I think it looks like. And if you were to take a gray alien and add like a ridge on its head and make its its head and eyes real bulbous and, and just with a weird looking mouth, that's what he showed me. And so there was a girl that used to listen to my show, and she she had a drawing that her son had submitted to us for the art contest. I don't know if you remember that picture. Uh-huh. She said, my son drew this. Well, about two months went by, and she messaged me, and she started telling me a Chupacabra story. Uh, this one happened up in uh, not, not uh, 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 Milwaukee, right outside of Milwaukee. And she said, we were living right outside of Milwaukee. And she said, my son had drawn that picture. And she's like, and I didn't know that he drew that from when he was a kid. He was 18 a few years ago when we had the contest. Remember the Willie Williams art contest? Yeah, yeah definitely. On our yeah. uh, page. And I'll show you guys that picture. I think I showed you the other day. I showed you. Yeah, I think so. It, yeah. And it had the tongue thing. Uh-huh. Whatever. Okay. So she said, my son drew that from memory from when he was a kid. And I said, how old was he when he drew that? She said, it was about 11 years ago. So when when she told me that, I thought that that thing is that's not a crawler. It was for the crawler, um, but it looks kind of like a chupacabra. And so I said, "Did was it pale that color?" She said, "No, it was a grayish green color, and it had this weird, these big weird reptilian slitted up eyes." And she said that he saw two of them. One time he saw that one with his friend, and they were outside playing or whatever. 
And they said, what is that? And they saw it kind of like they saw a little hand pu- pull down the tree branches and look at them while they were playing. And then one of the older, bigger kids said, get away from that. That, th- that thing's bad. I started throwing rocks at it and it ran off. Well, it turned out that it probably was bad because a couple of the neighbors had cats. One of them was a tomcat that would go in and out and they found it exsanguinated. So she said, she said they lived in the suburbs of Milwaukee, but she said that this was a crazy uh, incident that happened. And so the, when the neighbors were questioning her son and his cousin, they, they told them, yeah, they, they had seen this creature. This is what it looked like. And the neighbor said she saw something like that rooting around the backyard. And so then the cat goes missing and then they find it on the other side of the fence one day. The neighbors do. And that's this whole thing happened. So she said, do you think that it could have been a chupacabra? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's very possible. I don't think these things have a range. I mean, I think that they can, you know, another thing too, I believe is that they could come in and out of caves, you know? Oh, definitely. So, I mean, who knows what, what, you know, but back on topic of this first guy's encounter, I thought it was interesting that the yellow eyes, now his son described them as looking reptilian. And he also, they also described it alien like. And when he said the Roger guy character, you know how he talks like that. So yeah. American, you know, but he said that it was almost like you couldn't see the legs. Like it was like scrunched, scrunched and then its legs would, would come up like an accordion, like a kangaroo and jump. Well, do you remember the guy that used to work with us? He said that he saw something like that on Comanche Trail. Yeah. And he said he saw it jump off onto that little bridge right there coming up to the to the job site. Do you remember that? It was, yeah. you know, it's like a creek, uh, like an offshoot of the, of, of Tra- Lake Travis. And he said that, which wouldn't possibly lend credence to the idea that maybe it's aquatic because that's what it did. It jumped, you know. And I just, I wonder uh, like how many times people have seen these things and just not reported it. They didn't know what it was, you know, and like the the next one, I'm going to tell you, they would never have reported if they hadn't heard my show. Uh, So that, that's another thing. I mean, it was, it was a very weird story. So the one in Milwaukee, which turned out that that picture was given to us, it was a, it was a drawing or whatever. And it was very scary uh, for th- her son, because like, you know, when he drew that from when he was a, a child, the second time he saw it, it was crawling through the window, lifting the window up and trying to crawl into his room. And he was standing there paralyzed. He said he was almost eight years old. It was like a couple days before his eighth birthday. And it, it looks like it's coming through the window. You know what I mean? And like, he he's like, I'm sitting here. Here is the weirdest part about this story. Not that he saw a chupacabra type creature, not that a animal was found dead and exsanguinated. He said that when it was lifting up the window, that it distorted its body. Like they lived in an old, in a, in a, in a, in a not an old house, but the, the windows uh, were old. Yeah. And it, th- like she said that one of them, especially the one in his room, wouldn't lift up very high. So this thing managed to take the screen off and she said that it, according to what her son had told the, the, the window didn't go up about four or five inches this thing managed to, to to squeeze its body down and start to kind of like goo itself that's how Gross. he described it in through the window it, it compressed its head and came through the window now here's what's interesting about that like if that's not interesting enough I worked with a guy who was from Puerto Rico, and I've told this story on the show. I'm not going to go into a big old long explanation, but he described this the, as this wolf-like creature that managed to flatten its body out, and then his grandfather actually shot and killed it. Now, I know you've heard this, guys, because you did the show with me, um, but that's very reminiscent of that. And then after he shot it, he described it as like John Carpenter's The Thing, like flopping around and and you know making all kinds of weird noise and... And then this thing just kind of like crawled away, spider crawled away. Now, it's very interesting that I was talking to to this uh, guy, Jerry, the other day about these things and how a lot of them, he says that he believes they have spider DNA. And that's why they're able to low crawl and they they look spider-like when they crawl. And he he was talking about Chupacabra, the, the, the pale crawlers, Dogman, Bigfoot. They all have this sort of connection he thinks that, you know, and it has something to do with where they come from, which is the inner earth. Um, hopefully, I'll be getting him on the show to record with him pretty soon. We have a bunch of people that we're trying to record with, and we're getting some of it done. But uh, suffice it to say, we're not going to run out of people. I can tell you that. There'll be, a, there'll be a ton of interviews coming out on Thursdays. 
uh, I believe starting this Thursday too, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're okay. we're planning months ahead. I mean. Yeah. So what ends up happening is this creature, as it's coming out, and this is a brave boy, like he decides to start throwing his school books at it, and he hits it where where what should be its head, and he said it kind of like slinks back. The way he described it to his mother was like an octopus. Like, you know how you see them thrust back and how they flatten themselves yeah. and whatever? And he said that he goes, dude, it reminded me of an octopus. But anyway, he drew a picture of it, you know, for that art contest. And um, yeah, and and I don't know, um, like, if that is exactly like the description, like what it, you know. But uh, yeah, we have it. I have it somewhere. But it was just, I, I don't know. I didn't know the backstory to that picture. Yeah, because obviously, I mean, I think our our contest was about the pale crawler. So, like, when you see that picture, you're like, oh, that's kind of yeah, weird. Kind of weird, yeah. And then, you know, she had, like I said, it was like it was like a couple of months after we did the Chupacabra episode when she gave me that. So, I just kind of held it in my back pocket and I said, you know what? I'm going to talk about that when we do another Chupacabra episode. And and like I said, Nelly and Anthony, we were talking about it on the way back from San Antonio. And y'all were like, hey, maybe we should do one. So, okay. We have enough info of stories and material for it. Why not? Now, here's another one. Here's one that was weird. And we're going to go from there. We're going to go to uh, a country that we've talked about before. And this is Cuba. Now, this was given to me by a guy who's been living in the United States for 12 years. He's from Cuba. He's a very nice guy. He used to work at a used car dealership. And he was a basically a friend of a friend. And he gave me this one straight up. And he was telling me uh, about you know living in Cuba and whatever. One of the things we started talking about, I don't even know how we got on this subject, but was the movie Scarface and, you know, drug dealers and all that. And he was talking about when he was, when he, they didn't have that movie over there, right? So he first comes here, people are like, you got to watch this movie Scarface. And he said he watched it like 10 times because it was like this Cuban guy who came from nothing. He did all this stuff. Yeah. He goes, man, I love that movie, man. He's a great movie. I like watched it like 10, 11 times, man. And so we started talking about it. And I said, I said, you know, you being from Cuba and, and the area where you lived, you know, over there in that uh, Western corridor where the, the narcos, which, you know, they would, it was a drop off point, you know? And I said, did you ever see anything weird with those guys? And I was hoping that he would give me something, you know? Um, I know that area where he was from, there's like ghost stories, there's like pirates, there's stories of like people walking around, headless pirates and weird stuff, you know, and mer creatures, you know? And he says, no, man, I, I saw this, uh, these, these narcos. And I'll even kind of do it in his voice. And uh, he says, At one time I saw these guys, man. He goes, they had a big crate, like a, and they said like a little monster inside. And he goes, and they opened the crate and they said, look, you know, this is a chupacabra. We got it from Puerto Rico. And he said, I was a little kid, man. He said, I was 13 years old. I was with my dad. You know, that's, that's great. His dad's out there, you know. <laughs> but, but hey, you know what? When you live in an abject poverty under communism, I mean, you do what you got to do, right? Yeah. I mean, you take yeah. your chances. I don't fault him. I mean, I don't, I'm not here to judge, just whatever. But he said that his dad told him, <coughs> you know, mijo, be careful, you know, that's a chupacabra. And they, and they said that it was literally in the crate, there were three dead chickens around it. And this thing came out and kind of hopped around a little bit and they got it to go back into a cage or they got it to go into a cage uh, by using cattle prods. And, and they, they, were, they kept shocking it and it was very vicious and very violent. And it lunged at one of the guys and, and latched onto his leg and then they started like hitting it to get it to, get, to let go. And then they finally, one of them kicked it and it wasn't overly large. You said it was only about two foot, you know, long. And it, they, they put it into the cage and it was like just hanging down. They could see its arm hanging down like it was injured or something. And then one of the other guys started screaming and yelling at him, at the guy that kicked it, saying, look, you know, this is, we're selling this thing. Don't be, you know, whatever. And so his dad, him saw it. They witnessed a chupacabra. And it was part of a deal, I guess, that they were making because I guess these narcos uh, would buy these things as pets. And then they would take them to Mexico and to Florida, and then they would get loose. Now, that makes sense to me in one way because I, I got a report out of South, South Florida one time. This woman was in the backyard mowing her lawn, and she saw what she thinks was a chupacabra coming up out of the water 
there was this big commotion in the water and she didn't know what it was. And she looked and she sees something floating and she thought that was, that's the strangest looking alligator I've ever seen. And she sees like this ridge on its back and she's like, what is that? And then she's in this, this pond where this happened. She said they used to have geese and they had had the, the pest control people come and get rid of all the alligators. So she said that the alligators will still get in there. And eventually all the geese were just disappearing. Well, she says this thing came up out of the water. She said this was like in, the, in 1982. And she's an older woman. And she said that this thing came up out of the water and it was quintessential chupacabra looking thing with red eyes. And she said it was, she could see it. The eyes were red and it was daylight, but the, the sun was refracting off of it, making it look like reddish, orangish red, whatever. And it had a goose or a swan, I'm sorry, a swan in its mouth. Too bad it wasn't a goose. Yeah, <laughs> no, they weren't geese. I said geese. It's actually a swan. But she said that you know that they were real, real adamant. These people were like, "We're going to have this pond and this subdivision," and you know, and they eventually had to give up because there were gators, and they just kept coming back. And eventually, they ate all the swans, or they thought. But she said this creature. This was no snake. She's like, it wasn't an alligator. And I'm convinced what I saw was a uh, a chupacabra. Well, going back to the, 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 the guy who did the contest and he ended up throwing the book at the uh, Chupacabra, the thing recoiled and went back out uh, of, its, of his window and then kind of reformed and hopped away. Now, he says it hopped away. Well, that's very interesting because this woman in Florida said the same thing. When it got up onto the, onto the dry land, she said, I was telling my husband, she's like, I was like, his, his name's Harold. And she was like, Harold, you got to see this. You got to see this. So Harold goes over there kind of like, what? You know, and she's like, he doesn't want to believe me. And he's, he's like, he throws his newspaper down and goes, what? And then he's like, what in the heck is that? <laughs> like, what are we looking at here? And it began to hop away and it went into some underbrush and it was gone. Now, she never saw it again. She never saw it since. But it does lend credence to what the Cuban uh, car dealer was telling me, that these drug dealers were bringing these things and they were taking them as pets. And some of these Cubans that were selling, you know, uh, cocaine, you know, back in the day in the eighties, you know, they were probably, they probably had these things. I mean, and then th it was happening in Mexico. These guys were going back to Mexico. There was a guy that claimed that some guys from the cartel, uh, on down in Mexico, just South of Matamoros, that they had some of these creatures and that they would actually take like, uh, wild cats and, and other types of, of animals and fight them. And get them to fight. And this this one guy, uh, we'll call him Toro because that's his nickname. I've known him for quite a while. He spent almost, I think, 17 years of his life in prison. And uh, he told me, he's like, he was in a gang. And he said, dude, I used to work for these guys down in Mexico. And he goes, and one of the things we did, he's like, the, the people that I work for, they were narcos. And he said, and they would buy animals like, you know, jaguars and, and like, you know, hyenas and, and, and like wolves. Yeah. Cause they had enough money to buy mm -hmm. everything. So. And then they had, he said one time he watched a half pit bull, half wolf mix. He said it was the meanest animal he'd ever seen. And it was so weird looking. He said that it looked like if you took a pit bull and you just made its hair longer and the, the ears more wolf-like and a little bit of a longer snout. But he said it was a vicious, vicious animal. And, uh, <laughs> The funny thing, the funny thing, and that and the, its name was Chiquito. And so, <laughs> and so he said Chiquito was a killer. You know, it would kill anything. And they got, he said it actually kind of made him, you know, his stomach queasy. But, uh, and if you, if you get upset easy, folks, I'm sorry to tell you this. But anyway, they put this chupacabra in there with it and they killed each other. The, the dog killed it, managed to hold it down and kill it. Uh, but the dog ended up dying too, because these things have some sort of venom. And usually these animals, if they did win, which was very rare, but if they did win, they would die later on from some sort of poisoning. Now, there was another guy they named Chewy, uh, who said that he, and this is this guy's friend, him and this guy named Henry, they were guards that stood guard for a, basically a, a house where they kept narcotics. And that one of these things got loose on the grounds. Uh, and this wasn't actually in Mexico. This happened down in, uh, I think he said, uh, not Belize, what is it? in Bolivia. This was in Bolivia. But he said that one of the guys that worked for him because they had a friendship or whatever um, was from Bolivia. And he said, dude, we were guarding a house 
you know, with with where they make like a where they make it. You know what I mean? Like a, a lab. Let's put it that way. And he said, and one of these guys that, that was in charge of it, he had one of these things like a pet, and it got loose. And he said that it bit his friend Henry. And now what what this guy told told him was that after it bit him, he said he was sick for like two or three days. And it caused like this gangrenous, you know, well, the, he didn't say gangrene, but I know that's what he was talking about. And it went up into his arm and then eventually it just took over and he died of like some sort of sepsis looking illness. So these things have some sort of venom, you know, that they, that they kill with. Um, now, you could think of like the Komodo dragon, like the Komodo dragon has all these different types of bacteria in its mouth. And that is how they kill some. They'll bite one of these water buffaloes and then they'll just walk around for days tracking it until it lays down and dies because it's so disgusting. The mouth is so poisonous. Uh, one of our friends who shall remain nameless, who name starts with an S, <coughs> but uh, yeah, if he bites you, I'm pretty sure the same thing would happen. But now th- this, this, this is what I was wondering about. Like maybe what if it's not a, a venom, but it's some sort of like toxic cocktail of a bacteria. And now I'll tell you this one. There's another one. I got this one outside of Matamoros too. Uh, this one was some people who literally were practicing brujeria and they told my brother this story years and years ago. Like I said, when I first got into this, me and my brother were, were both involved in, in studying these things. And the first time we really delved into the chupacabra was over 20 years ago when we were looking into the reptilians. And uh, we were like, you know, reading books by David Icke. And of course, Anthony, you've read some of the same books I have. Oh, yeah. About, I think you've read Tales from the Time Loop and all that. Yeah, it's a good one. And so we were we were talking about the David Icke and the, the reptilians or whatever, and it came up about Chupacabra. Now, a friend of ours, uh, I, th- I think it was Ronan. I'm not 100% of you guys. You know who he is. Y'all met him. Yeah. Met yeah. Him. Um, I, I think it was, one of, it was him or one of his friends. We were at a party. And he told my, this guy told my brother, I know it wasn't him, but I think it was one of his friends. This heavyset guy uh, told us this crazy story. And and we kind of hit it off, me and him, because he knew the band In Flames. And so we started talking about <laughs> uh, In Flames and uh, Dark Tranquility, which I used to listen to. And so we were sitting there talking. He was a musician. And we kind of hit it off. And, and, and so he was a friend of a friend. And he told us this story. And he, told, well, he was telling my brother, and I was listening And he said, dude, I had an encounter with one of these chupacabras. Now, back then, you know, we were hearing about chupacabras just like we do now, but people were not calling it that dog thing. It was that, not the blue dog. It was an actual, and he said, dude, when I was down in Matamoros, he goes, I'm not going to lie. I I was dating a, a, a bruja and she was practicing some pretty bad stuff. And her, her tío had one of these things as a pet. And of course he was a narco. And he was actually Venezuelan, but he was living there in Mexico and he was married to a Mexican woman. And he had one of these things as a pet and he would feed it live animals. And he goes, I watched this thing exsanguinate animals. Like he goes, I saw it with my own eyes. And when he was telling us, you know, and then we left the party, it was the party we had down in, uh, uh, oh God, where we used to work, where Clark's, uh, where Steven, Clark's uh, friend lived, uh, Manchak. We're li- it was it was a party down in Manshack at this this big house and, and and so we were down there we were talking there was all these people there and uh, it was an after hours party so when we left it was like four or five in the morning and I'm like I oh, believe that I mean I mean who knows the guy could have just been telling stories but like I said on the show before I like to pull threads and one of these things one of the things that this guy told us. And and I had forgotten all about this story. My brother had reminded me of it the last time we did the Chupacabra episode. And so I wrote it down. I said, we're going to talk about this one. He showed us like a scar that went from like like right here. Why well, y'all can't see it, the audience. But right below the, the index finger knuckle and it went all the way up his wrist. So this thing had a pretty big mouth. And, and, and you looked at the scar and it was nasty. Like it, it, he said it had turned like uh, into sepsis. And like they, they had to remove a bunch of tissue uh, and it looks like, you know, like something took a bite out of his flesh. He goes, but no, it just bit him and then it let go. He's like, and then there were these two close together, like puncture looking marks and they came out the other side of his wrist. And he said that he had to go to the doctor and they had wrapped his hand, his wrist and he was bleeding to death. And then they found like this yellow pus that, that built up immediately and he spent almost two weeks in the hospital. 
from getting bit by this creature. So I asked him, I said, what, well, you know, what, I'll call him Jay. And, and that's his name is Jay. He says his name was Jay. Uh, and I don't remember his last name, but anyway, he said, I said, Jay, what happened while you were in the hospital with this situation? And he said, dude, they said that it was sepsis. Like it was some sort of like bacterial infection, but they also found an unknown substance in his body that was akin to almost like nitric acid that was like on the, the the top of his skin. And he said that whenever they, 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 they couldn't identify what it was. And, but they said that it had the properties of nitric acid and that's why it, it melted his flesh, but very little of it got into his bloodstream. And it was really, uh, his hand was just ruined. He couldn't play guitar anymore or anything. Um, but he said that it was awful what happened to him. And he said that he was down there for the summer, you know, and his, his, I think he said he was like 19, 20, something like that. And he was down there and this thing attacked him. And, uh, he said that he, his, you know, his girlfriend's dad was like, you need to feed this animal, whatever, or uncle. He had a job, you know, working with the guy. And when he went to go feed it, the chickens or whatever, that it would eat live chickens, it would drink their blood. And he said, and it thing just bit me. He said it had little hands like claws, and it reached up and grabbed him. But he also one of the one of the interesting things about this story, and, and I remember I think my brother had told Armando this story, and Tony, you may have heard part of it, but I, I had forgotten all about it until I read the notes, and then my brother was like, "Hey, you did the Chupacabra episode. If you do another one, talk about this, you know." And and but one of the things that I remember about that story, um, and it was very telling, you know. That I just remember when he was telling me that story, I folks don't, you know, I was very intoxicated, like very intoxicated. <laughs> and it took my brother jogging my memory about all of it and me going over the notes. And so I can't take all the credit for getting this story. It was very much him and Willie who got the story. It's funny. We we're talking about Willie earlier on the art contest, but, uh, and so, and, and when we were talking about it and, and one day, um, my brother just said something about it and he was like, Hey, I, I was listening to the Chupacabra episode. Did you talk about what Jay had told you? And not, not immediately. It didn't dawn on me. And then when he started giving me the reminders and then I was like, Oh yeah, I remember that. And it was just like, I think I was just really drunk, you know, probably, but, uh, thank goodness there were a few people that were sober that heard it and were like, Hey, this is the notes for it or whatever. So that, I just want to give credit to him for for that. Shout out to my brother for for doing that story or getting that story. Uh, but this guy, I do remember though how nasty his hand looked, and he did come up to the club a couple times and talk. And I believe that he told Chico Squid and probably Loki that story too. And I'm pretty sure Scorpions heard it. Um, but that's a pretty crazy story, you know. And I just never had. I didn't tell it on the last one. We had every all our, our stuff set or whatever. Um. Go staying in Mexico. Now here's another one. This one happened outside of Monterrey, and uh, I have some friends. One of my friends is a DJ, and he lived down in, in uh, Monterrey for a long time. And he would come up here, and it's crazy. His English is so perfect that when you hear him speak Spanish, it, it's like whoa. <laughs> You know, it's like, he's like, and he starts talking real fast. And, and then he's like, yes, yeah, as I was saying, you know, <laughs> and, and so you don't even know. And then one day he told me, uh, he says, yeah, I used to live in Mexico. And I'm like, really? I didn't even know he was from Mexico. I thought he was at Tejano. But he said, you know, he goes, yeah, he goes, uh, I used to live in Mexico and we were talking uh, recently on in a group and it was about the Chupacabra. And he said something in that group. So I, I said, PM me. So he did. And we started talking. And then he said, you know, he, he just called me and he said, dude, if you ever want to do a show about the Chupacabra, I have a story for you. And now what's crazy is he was a little boy and y'all have heard the story already. Actually, it was, a, don't, you know, if you're not surprised, but he was a seven year old child and him and his older brother, Miguel, uh, they go into what, what was, uh, the old barn or not or the old stable. There was a stable. And then there was this older area that was a stable. And there again, his mom's brother was involved in the cartel. And he said, dude, they had beef with another faction and there was some stuff going on. He says, so what ended up happening, we go out to this uh, out, outlying building and me and my brother were not supposed to. We're never supposed to go out there. And we were by the, the regular stable messing with the horses. And my older cousin, uh, Juan, was watching us. We snuck off. 
And he said, when we snuck off, we heard a man in pain. So we run over there and we look and we see kind of, you could see the, the, the windows were so dirty. You couldn't really look through them. He says, so we just did what kids do. We snuck around, went to the back and we walked in and we see this man laying in, in a can. There again, folks, if you get upset easy, you, you, you know, this might upset you. But there was a man laying inside the bottom of this ca- at the bottom of this cage, and these creatures. Uh, and he gave a, a great description of them, and he said they were just d- biting him, and and like they would take a bite and just, and then they would kind of snap at each other, and then they would move around him, and they were drinking his blood. And he said that you could see eventually the guy was just not moving. You know, he was definitely unalived. And then one of the uncles. Uh, friends saw them and said, Hey, what are you doing in here? And ushered them away and then told them to forget about what they saw. And then later the uncle took them out and got them ice cream and whatever and told them, Hey, you know, that was a very bad guy. And he did some very bad things. And, and those creatures, you know, they have to eat too <laughs> and, you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> the birds and the bees. And-, <laughs> and so he, he asked, he goes, I asked my uncle, I'm like, Theo, what, what was it? You know? And he goes, Oh, well, you know, uh, they come from underground and, and, and they're just like normal creatures like, like us, but they live underground and, and we buy them. And he was just like, wow, you know, like blown away by that. And then he said, one of the weird things too, and I'm like, that's not weird enough. I always say that. But one of the really weird things about it was he said, like, he had nightmares about these creatures for a long time. And then there was this weird thing that happened to him that he said, he thought, because the the ranch house they lived in, and this is interesting, was haunted. And not by chupacabras, but by some sort of entity, Right. And he said they would see this shadow moving around. And at one time, it even pushed his sister down in the hallway. And he goes, I saw this with my own eyes and it scared the crap out of me. And he said this thing turned and it was the hat man. It had like a hat, like the hat man. Yeah. And he said that if you looked at the hat, though, it almost looked like how these old time UFOs looked. It looked like it was wearing like a UFO in its head. That's what he said. But it had like these red eyes. And he said that one night he he saw something black, like move down the hallway really quickly. And he said he couldn't go to sleep. And it was a school night. And he was like, I had to get up and go, and then, you know, whatever. And uh, so he goes, I saw, I finally, got, I finally get to sleep. He's like, and when I do, I immediately go into this dream. And he said that there's this tapping on the glass. And I look over and I see this creature like waving at me, looking like it's smiling. It's got a bulbous reptilian type head. That's the way he described it scales, everything, big eyes, and it had like a ridge on its head that was reminiscent of like a rooster. You know how the roosters have the little yeah, the, know, plume. The, the plume or whatever? And he said it was almost like a plume on its head. And these creatures, he described them as grayish green and that they had the ones that attacked the guy, right? And mm-hmm. that they had spikes on their back that were frilled up, yellowish spikes, he said, yellowish uh, to red eyes. They were, they were, they were changing color. And then he said that, that the legs, it looked like they were, it was so weird, they were bouncing around on their stomachs that you could barely see the, the feet of these things, the legs. And he said you could see their bellies were full, like they, were, they, were, they had drank blood. And maybe more than one person. That's what he said. But he said he sees this vampiric looking creature, this reptilian, as he described it, reptilian vampiric looking creature that looked similar to the things he saw in the barn, but not, or not completely in that stable, Right. And he said that when he turns and looks at it and it gives him this like sort of mind speak and it tells him open, open. And he's, it's tapping the glass. And then he goes, no. And then he said the eyes be, it began to stare at him. And he said he felt almost hypnotized and he started moving toward the window to open. He goes, as my hands moving toward the window, I wake up and I'm just like, I'm literally like I had woken up, like I was dreaming it. And I look out the window, there's nothing there, but my hand is in midair reaching for the latch. And I'm like, whoa. So he's like, I fall back. And he said he slept where he slept was on the second floor. And it's just big rock house. He's like, there's no way to scale that wall to get to where he was at. And he's like, he's looking around and he's like, what was that? Like, you know, it was like a dream, right? But uh, I thought that was interesting. I don't know exactly what that is. If this demon or, or shadow person or whatever you want to call it was in that house, was playing on a fear that he had of these creatures. But he said that whenever people talk about the chupacabra, it scares the crap out of him because he remembers what he saw with his brother when he was when they were kids. And now his brother died in a car wreck uh, a few years uh, after his uh, – uh, I think he said after he turned uh, 18. 
um, he would drink and drive in Mexico, you know, and he moved up here to the States, but his brother lived down there and he would be going real fast down these country roads. And he said a few years after his 18th birthday, uh, he flipped his car and he died. And so his Walita, his grandma always said that it was like an ill omen that they saw those creatures because she said anybody who sees these creatures, according to her, they die shortly after, you know, like they, or they, 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 they die, uh, young. Let's put it that way. And he died shortly after his 18th birthday. So I said a few years. I mean, a few months. I'm sorry. But uh, I make mistakes, folks. Uh, but anyway, th th that's some pretty crazy stories, you know. And uh, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I've been, ran you know, rapid firing these stories. But let me get your input. I mean. So that, it's definitely weird. I mean, like I said in the beginning, you know, chupacabras are one creature that kind of. I don't really understand how to what to, what to make of them because they're mammal looking creatures with reptile features that drink blood. It's a very weird mix of everything. And then what you said about them kind of like being blobbish and being able to like kind of basically like they don't have bones or something, so they're able to just goo into small spaces. It kind of makes they have bones. Well, I mean. It, Hear me out for a second because, like, a, we're just throwing out theories here, but it makes me think of when uh, people would shoot at dogmen or shoot at Bigfoot and they see that gray kind of like dust or like is it like nothing yeah, happens. Yeah, the gunpowdery looking mm -hmm. stuff. It, it's like, what if these things that are, if we pretend and if we believe that these are spirits that are creating physical bodies, why would they create it correctly? Like, wouldn't you just kind of make something together? Like, what, you know, you, we well, always that's joke. Why I wonder if it's, like, from the inner earth. We always joke, though, like, you know, like, we're, we're souls inhabiting meat bags. But, like, what if they're literally just souls inhabiting only meat bags? And that's why they're, like, their physiological makeup doesn't make sense. It's not natural, obviously. So, it doesn't need things like bones. So, it might be something to where it's, like, it has this weird makeup to where it's able to do stuff like that because... It does. Besides having just net, like whatever it needs to survive, it doesn't have anything else. <clears throat> I don't know. What do you think, Anthony? I can't really pin this pin this creature down. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's hard to to come up with a theory on on the nature of it. I mean, I I, I want to say that it's it sounds like the result of some mad scientist experiment. Because yeah, definitely, it does. I mean, like, what is the point? What is the point of its sustenance coming solely from blood? That that doesn't make well, sense. It, blood it, is life, right? It, yeah, mean, blood is a life. But think about this though, too. The blue dogs, they drink blood too, and those are you know we 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 I know from the show that Ken Gerhard did. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but but it was a show he was on, and he did the investigation on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I should ask Ken. I didn't, you know, but it, it it's one of those things where. Like, we know, I think, what the mother is. It's like coyote and dog or something, but we don't know what the father is. And it's so weird. Uh, they can't really pinpoint exactly what it is. And, and and if you look at those creatures, they have these weird fangs in the front. They have these, like, Nosferatu-looking faces, and they're like a dog. Yeah, it, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't add up evolutionarily. Well, hear me out. Evolutionarily. Ooh, throwing out the big words, though. Mm. Someone's read a dictionary. <laughs> Hold on, before you go into that, <laughs> but, but like, I mean, there's a lot of things that don't fit into the fossil record. Like, there's no primates, well, I mean, large well, primates about, in North America. That kind of actually, now that you say that, makes sense about my earlier point about them lacking bones and stuff like that. You like had a they, point? They wouldn't leave records. If they just were like, they just, if they were entirely yeah, like, organic. Okay. So I, I would say like this, if it was a cephalopod, yeah, it's but it, it's not because it, you know, it's obviously not. Yeah. It, it could be. Now hear me out on this one. The cephalopods, a lot of people and even scientists have been saying, and one of them uh, I was reading about not too long ago. I mean, like this guy was like Max Planck Institute guy, you know, and he's over here talking about octopuses or aliens. Like their DNA doesn't match, you know what I mean? Like, like aliens. Yeah, and cephalopods have been talked about by a lot of people, geneticists, a lot of different people who have come out and said, you know, biologists, you know, marine biologists claiming that these things don't match anything else. They don't make sense. I mean, their intelligence yeah. is so crazy. And that one day they could be what would usurp mankind. I believe that if we manage to destroy ourselves, like wolves are kind of where we were 10,000 years ago. You know, I mean, think about it. It's, they're not that far behind. Like, orcas, definitely the smartest people. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the ability to do, 
you know, what we do, we don't have, they don't have thumbs. Uh, but if you, if you look at the, the cephalopod, it's a, it's a candidate, you know? And one thing that, uh, octopuses can do is that they can fit into any space that's wider than our small, or bigger than their beak. themselves down. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the, the story we got from the aquarium in Corpus? Uh, I mean, we don't know if that's a true story or not, but we, we have heard stories of similar things happening. But when we were down in Corpus, remember when we went to visit Corpus? Mm-hmm. And it was me, you, and Zane, and we were talking to one of the people there, and they were saying that that was that that one octopus had gotten out and it had eaten the baby sharks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> that's that's crazy. I mean, and that's actually it's not like it's a rarity between. We've octopus. heard that happen in other aquariums. It's, it's not uh, like octopuses that. are very clever, and that you mm-hmm. actually, if you're keeping one, you have to keep them in a specific way because they'll actively try to get out, like their little puzzle masters or something yeah. they're, they're a little escape artist and they'll get out and go to your other aquariums mm-hmm. and eat their fish and then go back into their aquarium and act like it wasn't them and they'll mm-hmm. they'll close their whatever and or they'll close their uh, aquarium to make it look like they never left they're incredibly intelligent and then there was the creature uh the kraken creature that actually uh was actually killing the ichthyosaurs mm-hmm. and it was and, and they found its lair it was supposedly like a hundred million years ago and it had like lined its lair with the bones of of, an, of a prehistoric you know predator yeah, fish. Plant, put really nicely too. Yeah, they, yeah, made little pictures out of it. It was unreal, and scientists were just baffled. They were like, and they could tell by the the sucker marks on there. That's what it was. Um, yeah, it, they're very intelligent creatures. There's no doubt. But is the chupacabra the work of mad scientists who? threw together something that made this thing, you know, and then maybe they put a dash of reptilian in there with some he- Gila monster venom, yeah. you know, like maybe the Gila monster, you know, like, I don't know. Like, you <laughs> no, know, when you think, you're thinking about the Gila, like the, the, the poisonous re- uh, yeah, lizard, yeah. you know, like maybe it did, or maybe it got some Komodo dragon blood in there and they said, let's mix it with an octopus's DNA and, and let's see what we come up with. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just throwing, I'm brainstorming because well, I don't know what it is. Here's an entirely like wild theory that, you know, obviously no basis in it, but something that I said when we were doing a, a show a couple of to- uh, a show a couple of weeks ago is that what if vampirism is like a curse or like a, a parasite or an illness that just gets, you know, transferred from people to people? What if, and Anthony said like, oh, do you think it's possible for animals to get that? What if that's what these chupacabras are? Is that it's an animal infected with this vampirism Ill illness and that it, it didn't, not modifies them in some way, but like alters them in some horrific way, like how you would expect uh, a human who gets turned into vampirism the same way to where like they turn gray and scaling, they grow those fa- nose for So what are they to begin with? Well, who knows? Like what if it, what, what if it's just like the blue dogs, for instance, like what if they are more prone to catch this illness? And, and then because of that, they a vampire illness. Well, are you mad? Remember that story you had <laughs> with that guy who joined that, uh, who uh, was abducted by aliens and he found that alien or that, that vampire that was like, Oh, the zoo? Uh, yes, you're talking. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. where I'm kind of basing where yes. this theory comes they, from. It was a female, wasn't it? They told her uh, this thing got get, gets loose. Mm-hmm. I think it was a woman that that, that was that was her story. Yeah. It, was it her or the, the guy that ate the, the cake, right? It was it was that episode, right? Yeah, I don't remember which. which well, there's so many stories we get. With the aliens, yeah. But the, because but there, but there's actually two different ones where somebody has seen what they thought was a vampire but the the one I know looked more like what they call the ahul, you know. It looked like that vampiric bat winged type yeah. creature, and they had it like in a cage. And then there was another one where I think it was the, I think it was a female that told us that one where she saw it like inside of a uh, uh, like what she didn't know if it was a facility or a ship. I think she was an underground installation. Yeah. And she saw this creature, and, that, and they said that that thing was thousands of years old. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And it was actually about. like an alien. Yeah. It was an alien, and they said that it wasn't – what they told her, it was an alien, right? Remember what they said, like what it was – It was, it was in, capable of wiping out humanity. Yeah, because it was like a curse though, or like yeah. or like a sickness. It had a disease. A sickness, a disease. Had a disease yeah. Exactly. So it's like what, what, what – that's where I kind of base this kind of theory, which I don't believe in. But it's just something that I need to throw out there because it is in my head. What if it is correct? Huh? Yeah. It's like, what <laughs> it's if that's that. what a lot of these blood suckers are? Because yeah. that blood sucking is so weird to me because, you know, you hear blood sucking, you think immediately vampire, vampires. 
But then it's like with this thing, it's like, oh no, this is an entirely different creature that just does it on its own. Uh, one of the things I wanted to touch on before we go, because there are several other stories that we got that we didn't get to get to, um, is that so many people argue one way or the other whether or not Chupacabra is real. To me, there's no doubt in my mind it's a real creature. I've heard too many stories. And and I think that one of the things that people living up here in the United States, they still think of it as like some sort of like mythical beast or whatever, but south of the border, they don't think that. And I can tell you right now, there are a lot of people from Mexico all the way down to Argentina who swear up and down that these things are real. Now, how they ended up getting from Puerto Rico, hell if I know. But uh, I, I do believe that when Redfern went there, he was telling me about he you know his theories and what he thinks happened and how they ended up wherever they were at. Um, but they were literally from Puerto Rico originally, and it was near a military installation in the jungle where they were first seen. Now, it could be that the narcos bought them from people in Cuba who got them from Puerto Rico, and then they ended up in the mainland uh, of Mexico and Colombia. And it's rumored that a lot of these narcos had these creatures as pets, even Dogman, too. We've heard of Dogman. Well, I mean, it would make sense. I mean, if you look at how boa constrictors or, or you know, iguanas, pythons, pythons, py- pythons or, iguanas or iguanas are yeah. attacking, you know, Florida, then it would make sense that human intervention could have spread their natural habitat to all over South America. But I think these things, though, North America. Were, were, were harvested maybe underground, mm-hmm. caves. Yeah. And then they were taken and, like you said, maybe they were modified by some sort of government facility, whether the Puerto Rican government, American government, or joint operation. I don't know. And then they got loose in the jungle and they just proliferated. And, Mm -hmm. you know, eventually they ended up being picked up and sold by people who had gobs and gobs of money, which are narcos. They have gobs and gobs of money. Um, So, you know, they they just, uh, that could be what's going on. I mean, I don't know. I mean, or the very genetic experimentation itself is is being funded by these huge crime syndicates. Because uh, honestly, that's the only thing, that's the only part of these stories that, doesn't really surprise me is that is that these these narcos these cartels that have these things and and keep and to trade them and buy and sell them and keep them as pets or whatever but because a lot of times they'll have just as many if not more resources than their own federal government yeah oh they have I a mean, lot it's, more it's, it's, it's crazy I mean, that's what I said. at one time uh, what's his name Nor- uh, what's his name Noriega he was a narco he controlled all of Panama and it was all through drug money yeah. and then what's his name. Uh, uh, I mean, Escobar was Escobar. Making, was it, he was he was fighting the government. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was almost winning too. I mean, they have more money than you can buy with money. I mean, yeah, they, they they don't need money, and when you have that much money, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, so I mean, like the very underground facilities that could have been used to create these things or do whatever with these creatures could have just been owned by them. I mean, you you just don't know. Yeah, they're very powerful people. I mean. And people don't realize just how much power, you know. Well, yeah, I mean. People are shocked all the time every day when they found out that their reality is not what they think it is, mm -hmm. you know, and they just go whatever. Uh, Yeah, there's people out there who, I mean, I I in my life have met people with money. I mean, powerful, powerful people with a lot of money. And, you know, they're not to be messed with. I mean, you know, and I'm telling you, some of these people uh don't really they're not really they won't bother you if you don't bother them but some people man if you just, them knowing you exist isn't a good thing and i would hate to be eaten by chupacabras <laughs> it's a yeah. horrible horrible i'm not laughing and i'm laughing nervously i guess cuz i just it's something that's so obscene to me i couldn't imagine that being you know if that story is to be believed i mean i think it's true i mean i've known this guy for years and a bunch of my friends can vouch for his character uh, that told us that story, but uh, I mean, just look at his arm. Yeah. Well, you're talking about Jay. I'm talking about my friend, the DJ. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying his name because he still works around here. But, anyways, folks, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you being supporters of PRT. I uh, hope we gave you something to think about. And like I said, if you're only listening to us on Spotify, that's fine. But go back and listen to the live streams. We're gonna, you know, if you go back Sunday, a couple days before this one. You're going to get some information on on, on that from the, about the Chupacabra and the rake and get a few more stories. We have one off of Old San Antonio Road we didn't get to and another one of a farmer uh, out in West Texas who claimed that he – well, southwest Texas near the Big Bend area that claimed that he had one 
that was killing one of his goats, and he risked his life to try to save it. No, um, I, I have heard them being called a rancher. Like, I was goat killers. Like, is that something? Uh, do they specifically target goats, or are that's they just more the like animals? Chupacabra, Chupacabra means. means. Yeah, yeah like, means a goat sucker. sucker. Yeah. So, like, is it like do they specifically target goats? I don't think it's just goats. I just think no. That, it's just that like where they're typically seen is is like where a lot of people goat raise farmers goats, yeah. are. Yeah, and like they'll find their goats just exsanguinated. Like so. in Southwest Texas, yeah. the story I'll tell on the Sunday show. Hmm. So, folks, anyways, thanks for, for, and thanks for cleaning that up, Anthony, and thank you for the questions and everything that we, you guys, and, and the postulating and everything. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Good night. Good night.